In the last episode, we discussed how elements of Starfleet convinced the civilian government to allow enhanced security to help protect against a Dominion attack. Today, we'll discuss how none of that mattered. Getting back to the episode proper, we find Sisko and Odo now assisting in calibrating wall-mounted phasers that would be able to disable a changeling that was attempting to hide as a part of the room. They would do this by identifying the correct setting, also known as blowing Odo to hell and back utilizing phasers. After the appropriate setting was determined, Starfleet would immediately begin installing the devices at Federation Headquarters, Starfleet Headquarters, and all orbital stations. During this time, several security orders would be instituted. The scary thing about this is, most of them would be signed by Sisko himself. It is very telling how powerful Starfleet has become over the Federation populace. The scope of their control over the lives of Federation citizens is startling. We'll be visiting the interaction in another video, but it's ironic that Sisko would talk about how Leighton was attempting to install a military totalitarian state, and yet, here we have him bypassing all rights of the citizens without issue. As an example of some of these new laws, Cisco signs an order that requires families of Starfleet personnel to take blood tests. No exceptions. But this isn't about you. We've got civilian families living on starships and Starfleet installations all over the Federation. The only way we can secure those facilities is to test everyone there, whether they wear a uniform or not. When his father stands up against this obvious illegal search and seizure order, Sisko is surprised and annoyed. He states that while it's unlikely that his father is a changeling, they have families on ships and stations that have to be secured. The only way to do that is to require blood screenings. He states that while it's unlikely that his father is a changeling, there are ships and stations with families on board. The only way to ensure the safety of these military installations is to test those families. And if you do one Starfleet family, you have to do them all. First, no, it doesn't work like that. If you are a family member on a starbase or starship, you are there by invitation and subject to rules that are not required of families that are not on Starfleet property. You can leave if you don't like it. Secondly, and I can't believe I have to keep saying this, stop having families on military installations that could be attacked or destroyed. Cisco, your wife died on a ship attacked by the Borg. How are you this stupid? Now, this may be my American values coming into play, but these measures instituted by the military and just being accepted by the populace terrifies me. These are civilians, not Starfleet officers. With the stroke of a pen, civilians must capitulate to the military arm of the Federation. And from what we can see, Starfleet is either not challenged or there is no mechanism to stop them. Sure, Sisko's father says they have rights, but he never delineates what those rights are. He glibly states that he has the right to be obstinate. It is never outright stated that the Federation protects against illegal search and seizures. And again, even if we accept he does have those rights, those rights mean jack all because he is arrested for not doing it. Dad, you'd better get down here right away. What's wrong? It's Grandpa. He's been arrested. This utopia allows the military to run the streets and begin taking the blood from whoever the hell they want for whatever the hell arbitrary reason they come up with. And by all accounts, only one old man has an issue with it. And for his obstinance, they arrest him. And when it comes to everyone else, I'm just gonna say that I hope that their stores sell really good knee pads. Starfleet appreciates when you're very, very thorough. And even with all of this, almost immediately we see these security measures are absolutely worthless. And we'll find out why after this.
What's up, Lore Masters? I need your help. As many of you know, YouTube is once again starting to purge YouTubers. Whether you consider this a self-correction or an attack on freedom of speech, it makes those of us who do this for a living very nervous. I want you to be a part of the Save the Lore campaign. My videos can get upwards of 10,000 to 30,000 views. If you are someone who watches every one of my videos that uploads, please consider just giving $1 to patreon.com forward slash lore reloaded. If a fraction of the people who watch constantly just donate $1, I wouldn't have to worry about CBS nor the whims of YouTube. For those who don't want to use Patreon, I do have a Subscribestar, subscribestar.com forward slash lore reloaded. Or you can set up a reoccurring payment to paypal.me forward slash reloaded studios. These links are in the description below. Anything you guys can do is much appreciated and the less I rely on YouTube, the more I can do for you. Thanks for considering. As stated, these security measures are just absolutely worthless. Admiral Layton himself is impersonated. Keep practicing. You'll have those birds fooled in no time. Admiral? Yes? I know that Starfleet Command has always been a little uneasy about a changeling working in their midst. I just wanted to say how much I appreciate the trust you've shown in me. Thank you. You're welcome. Well done, Odo. Before I continue on with the breakdown, let me pause here a moment to consider the Changeling's intent in mimicking the Admiral for a second. Certainly we know that Changelings aren't stupid. While we will see contempt held for Odo in this scene, generally Changelings are very careful in their infiltration operations. Also, the real Admiral doesn't appear to be harmed. He didn't need to be rescued. He wasn't subdued. He was just off somewhere else. The Changeling in this instance appears sloppy. But was he? This would show Starfleet that they weren't doing enough. More had to be done. The current security measures, the phasers, the blood checks, it wasn't doing anything. By posing as Leighton, the Changeling had proven nothing worked. The Changelings not only knew he would be caught, he wanted to be. Perhaps the Changeling worried that with the new security measures, that might make Leighton feel safe enough that he wouldn't move forward. That he would put his plans on hold. So to ensure that the Admiral would stay paranoid and attempt to overthrow the Federation, the Changeling gave a little push. It would work too as Leighton would finally act. You know, it's interesting as I discuss the differences between the Romulans and the Dominion. The dialogue with the Romulans always indicated that it was a game of chess, but the Romulans were passive chess players if they were playing the game. The Dominion, in contrast, would certainly be aggressive players in this game. Just a thought. Looking back at the episode, this was a great move by the Changeling. Shortly after the Changeling imitated Leighton, Earth's entire power network would go down, including hitting Starfleet HQ. The attack would be so sophisticated that it even hit Starfleet's emergency systems. And let's pause and take a look at this for a moment. The dialogue indicates that Earth is completely helpless at this point, prime for an attack. While I would agree that Earth's entire network being knocked out is a massive concern, it's defenseless? First, we're never given any indication that Earth has orbital defenses. This is a huge complaint by many who watch the franchise. The lack of an orbital defense makes no sense. Additionally, was Space Dock and the surrounding ships impacted as well? We know this isn't true as they would utilize the Lakota in space to mobilize Starfleet security. It would seem to me that Earth's network is the last line of defense. You'd have to get through a lot to get there. You would still have Space Dock, starships able to move where they needed to go, the Mars defense perimeter, and more. Look, I'm not saying that this isn't a major concern, but Earth being defenseless against an incoming fleet because just the planet is down, it's just not logical. Either that or Starfleet sucks at defending planets. It's at this point that everything comes together. Cisco, Leighton, and other Starfleet officers beam into the office of the president as they are trying to figure out why the entirety of Earth is without power. Cisco is able to tie in the wormhole randomly, opening and closing with the attack on the Founder's homeworld that included the Romulans and Cardassians. Cisco notes that a cloaked Dominion fleet might be on the way and that Earth must institute martial law. Measures of this magnitude had not been in effect since the Borg scare. The President begrudgingly agrees and Leighton mobilizes Starfleet security. Starfleet begins beaming down security officers onto the street. Earth becomes a stronghold overnight under the guard and protection of Starfleet officers. Paradise would never be so well armed. 
During the discussion with the president, Leighton states that he had enough munitions to outfit an army. Now, there are some that might try to question why Leighton was never challenged on Starfleet stockpiling weapons for an eventuality like this. I considered it, but ultimately, I don't think it's unreasonable. With the Dominion a serious threat, preparing with weapons and defenses is logical. After this attack, Sisko's father turns completely around, fully accepting the blood tests. Lorerunner, another YouTuber I've mentioned in the past, has recently reviewed Homefront, which apparently also includes information from Paradise Lost, but isn't in the title. Anyway, in that video, he discusses the changes in Sisko's dad. I think his analysis is very nuanced. And I actually agree with him. Not only does the power outage encourage the more militant aspects of Starfleet to join Leighton's cause, but it pacifies the civilian element. If you are going to commit a coup, you need the citizenry behind you to some degree. This scare makes it seem like what Leighton is doing is necessary. After all, the Federation civilian government isn't doing anything about the issue. They can't stop the Dominion. But Starfleet, Leighton? He might be able to. Leighton's coup would be discovered by Sisko and Odo before he is able to overthrow the government. The two, of course, would go to the president, who is initially skeptical of their claim. The president then admits that even if he wanted to remove Leighton, he couldn't without evidence given how popular the admiral was. The populace enjoyed being pacified. It made them feel safe. Whew, I'm glad we can't be pacified to have a leader that's not good for us, but promises to stop the incoming hordes. While attempting to gather evidence, Sisko is confronted by the Admiral. Leighton attempts to convince Sisko to join him, and of course Sisko declines and is removed as acting head of security for Earth, and told to quote unquote, go home. While thinking through what has occurred, Sisko is approached by Chief Miles O'Brien. Of course, there is no way that the Defiant had arrived to Earth by this time, and the Chief is ultimately a changeling. You're not O'Brien. Ah, luckily no. The thought of being locked in the one shape all the time, it's ooh. It's unnatural. Ah, uh, don't bother calling for help. It'll only cut short our conversation, and I do enjoy your company. <laughs> if you have something to say to me, say it. Oh, you solids, you are so impatient. I, I thought we could sit here for a while. Maybe go to a bar, have a pint, throw some darts. I don't think so. Let me ask you a question. How many changelings do you think are here on Earth right at this moment? I'm not going to play any guessing games with you. Ah. What if I were to tell you that there are only four on this entire planet? Huh? Uh, not counting Constable Odo, of course. Think of it. Just four of us. And look at the havoc we've wrought. The arrogant being would tell Sisko that there were only four changelings, not including Odo, on Earth and to look at what they had wrought. Interestingly, it's hard for me to really pin down why the changeling would have done this. As I've stated, generally the changelings have a game plan and don't do anything without some purpose. As I've looked into this, I can only see three reasons outside of the changeling uncharacteristically boasting. First, this isn't a changeling, but some form of hologram or illusion by Leighton to galvanize the captain into his way of thinking. Unless it's some form of Section 31 tech, though, I don't think that this was available at this time. The ability to project holograms in this way is outside the ability of Starfleet at this moment. It could be someone who was surgically changed to look like O'Brien, but that's a bit extreme. If it is a changeling, it's possible that he was attempting to push the captain into joining Leighton. This entire plan would ultimately result in a civil war. That's almost a certainty. Thus, by helping Leighton, it may cause Starfleet to be more powerful, but that most certainly would be temporary. On the opposite side, the changeling could have been encouraging the captain to resist. The thought, perhaps, was that by inspiring the captain to fight Leighton, you would be moving along the much-needed civil war for the Dominion. Additionally, the belief could be that either result is preferable, and this is why it was done. Regardless of the reasoning, this would be the turning point, where Captain Sisko would ultimately make his choice, and the die would be cast. Stay tuned for the conclusion, where we put Admiral Leighton on trial.